Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Architecture Aesthetics. Today in this video, I would like to talk to you about using Photoshop Actions to speed up your post-production workflow. Now, to those of you who haven't dabbled in Photoshop Action before, the best way I can explain the gist of Photoshop Actions is that it is like custom functions or custom methods in programming. Whereas in programming, regardless of the language you're using, you would condense lines of commands down to a single method and call that method when needed, instead of having manually to type all of the lines of codes over and over again. Now, Photoshop Actions essentially embody the same idea in the sense that you're to condense the commands that you execute over and over again down to actions so that when needed you just call the action instead of having to manually execute all the commands. And today let's take a look at how I use Photoshop actions to help me with texture overlay and drop shadow. So without further ado, let's get into today's content. And as always guys, just a few quick words about the project. It is a pad project I have been developing with my partner Brian Xu. And the idea is to design a monumental architecture that can be visited from all six directions in a virtual reality environment. So to prepare the base image, what I did was I created a very fast, very crude base render using Rhino and V-Ray with the default material applied to the main structure and some very simple lighting setups. And with the RGB render output and the Material ID bitmap imported to Photoshop, how I typically apply texture overlay is that I would place the texture as an embedded image, scale it up to be able to roughly cover the desired area, and use the Distort tool to warp it in place. And finally, adjust the layer blending mode to get the most authentic looking outcome. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how to build our custom Photoshop texture overlay action. The actions panel is under the window drop down menu. After creating a new action either from the menu on the upper right hand corner or by clicking on the icon at the bottom, the record icon is going to turn red to show you that your commands are being recorded. And what I did was to perform the necessary actions chronologically. So it goes placing the embedded image. And for this image placing step, guys, make sure to toggle the show dialog option to prevent embedding the very same image over and over again. And then set the opacity of the embedded image to around 50% so we could see what's going on underneath the image. And then I used the insert menu item command to enter three commands consecutively, which include scaling, distorting, and finally uh, choosing the desired layer blending mode. The very last step in the action is to rasterize the layer for the ease of future editing.
So now the action is built, let's test it out. So we just choose the layer we wish to apply the texture over and click on the action we have just built. So as expected, the program asks us for the image to place and then it asks us to scale it, distort it and finally we are greeted with this dialog to select the layer blending option. In conclusion, the action works. Now, that's the gist of how to go about building your custom Photoshop action. Admittedly, what I just showed you was very simple, and it is quite analogous to your first Hello World application when you're just learning a new programming language. But hopefully you can see that it has the potential of automating very complex tasks and potentially saving you a ton of time in the future. Now I've sped up the rest of the texture overlaying process so that we can skip to the part where we take a look at how we can utilize Photoshop Actions to help us create drop shadows faster. So the mechanism of how I typically create drop shadows is that I just double click on the layer I wish to create drop shadow for and select the drop shadow option from the panel on the left after which I would right click on the drop shadow layer effect and make that into its own layer and finally use the free transform tool to shape the shadow layer however I want. With that in mind, I went ahead and built my custom auto drop shadow action. Now there's one caveat. When you're trying to select a layer that is above or below the layer that is currently being selected, you should use the keyboard shortcut Alt or Option if you're using a Mac and the left or right square bracket to do so because simply clicking on a layer would be registered as selecting a very specific layer instance and the action just simply wouldn't execute on other occasions when the layers are named differently. Now after the action was built, I populated the scene with two additional figures to better communicate the scale of the structure. So that's it guys, that's a very introductory glimpse at how can Photoshop Actions be relevant to architectural visualization post-production. I hope you found this video to be informative. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye bye.